Welcome to European Journeys. This is the second stage of a series in which we explore Geneva and in particular the history before the Reformation. Last week we started our tour in a suburb called Auvive by the Lake Geneva and today we're going to cross over the lake and uh, each day the famous shuttle boats called Mouette Genevoise travel from the location of our first stage, or vive that is, and reach the Quai Genève Paquis, where we can have, by clear weather, one of the most stunning view of Mont Blanc to be seen from Geneva. And in fact, Paquis will be the suburb of the second stage of this city tour. And nearly in front of the quai, next to the Jardin des Alpes, garden, a park, starts a street which is a testimony of the history of Geneva before the Reformation. Not so much because of the buildings there, but because of the name it bears. And the name of the street is Rue Adhémar Fabri. Well, Adhémar Fabri can possibly be considered as one of the most prominent figures of Geneva before the Reformation. He was a man who lived in the 14th century, and he was one among the long list of bishops of Geneva, and the bishops of Geneva were in fact the rulers of the city in medieval times. So knowing that the role of bishop in Geneva was abolished at the time of the Reformation, in the 16th century, it might come as a surprise to find his name held in honor here in this street. And moreover, his office lasted only three years, and added to that, Fabri visited Geneva only once during his office. So while this situation was not uncommon at the time, what made Fabri so famous was a document called Les Franchises. But before we explain what this was, let us first have an overview of his life. So Ademar Fabri was born at La Roche-sur-Foron, a small town south from Geneva, in the first part of the 14th century. He joined the Dominican order and joined the Dominican monastery of Geneva, where he became prior between 1353 and 1357. Everything seems to indicate that Ademar Fabri was a very capable man who did not go unnoticed, not even to the Pope. In fact, during his years in Geneva, Pope Urban VI appointed him to the office of Bishop of Bethlehem in Partibus. Now, as a footnote, in Partibus meant that he was basically the bishop of a land which was under foreign domination and at the time the Muslims had invaded the land. Then between 1366 and 1377, Fabri rose to the position of auxiliary bishop of Geneva. And finally, being bishop in Saint-Paul-Trois-Châteaux in modern-day France, Adema Fabri finally became bishop of Geneva in 1385, a position that he retained until his death three years later on the 8th of October, 1388. So that's for his life. And so it was during his three years term in Geneva that Ademar Fabri officially endorsed the famous document called Les Franchises. And this took place during his only visit here on the 23rd of May, 1387. But its impact on the future of Geneva would be lasting. So what were these documents called Les Franchises? And what did they contain exactly that had so much impact on Geneva? Well, Les Franchises, which were later commonly renamed Les Franchises d'Ademar Fabri, were a document of 79 articles which granted a level of freedom to the citizens of Geneva that was rare for the time. And to understand that, let us look into their content. The Genevan historian Jean-Antoine Gauthier classified its articles into four categories. Firstly, on a political level, the citizens and bourgeois of the city received the right to elect on a yearly basis four syndics or procurators whose function was to provide for the good of the community. And so part of their job was, for example, to decide together with two canons of the uh, diocese who were the representatives of the bishop, on the tax taken on the price of wheat and wine sold in Geneva. Secondly, on a judiciary level, the franchises 
determined the rights of the citizens, bourgeois and inhabitants. So, for example, they set the maximum limit of penalty that could be inflicted on any citizen for a crime committed in the city. They also set rules regarding family inheritance and also made sure that no Genevan citizen could be judged outside the city unless the matter had to do with the church or the cathedral chapter. Thirdly, on the administrative level, the franchise is set rules for the administration of justice between individuals. So, for example, they required that it should be done in the presence of the vidomne, and the vidomne was the right hand of the bishop who ruled over temporal affairs in Geneva. It should also be done orally in the language of the country. So you hear so many points here that were in favor of the citizens. And so it should be done in the language of the country unless the matter to be dealt with were more difficult. And finally, several articles were directed to the practical maintenance of the city. For example, the franchise addressed the selling of commodities, the cleanliness of the streets, the building of houses, or the carrying of public fields. And they also include directives intended to various crafts and guides. So such articles gave a great measure of freedom and protection to Geneva citizens. Well, the content of these franchises were indeed groundbreaking, because at the time, bishops could have a level of authority akin to that of a modern-day dictator. Les franchises, however, aimed at protecting the citizens from abuses of power over them. They also aimed at involving the citizens in the administration of the city. And even though they did not directly challenge the hierarchical supremacy of the bishop, they surely were forerunners of the principle of social responsibility that arose in lands which later would adopt the Calvinist Reformation. But why would a bishop endorse such a document that could potentially threaten his own position of authority? Well, in fact, what made Christianity unique is that the Bible taught that all men and women were made in the image of God. And even at the time when the Roman Catholic Church seldom taught the Bible to the people, this basic understanding of mankind was still in the background and could therefore be a strong bulwark against absolute power. And so without such understanding of mankind, free reigns would be given to dictatorship. So what happened after the franchises were adopted? Les franchises d'Ademar Fabri did indeed impact the city of Geneva in the long run. As could be expected, however, these were not faithfully respected by all subsequent bishops, but they nevertheless empowered the citizens. And repeatedly in future times, when threats of abuse of power were felt, the citizens found strength to stand in opposition on the basis of this covenantal document. Also, the increased responsibility given to the citizens of Geneva gave them a more substantial role through the city council. So even though Ademar Fabri was mainly an absentee bishop, his name is rightly remembered here in Geneva. And without realizing it, and probably without wanting it either, Fabri paved the way for the times of the Reformation, when the authority of the city was finally transferred from the bishop to a council elected by the people. I'm Cedric Placentino. See you next week for another stage of European Journeys.